Hi, everyone, and welcome to the 3.30 R9 Tech Bits um, session. Today, we're going to be learning about virtual reality and augmented reality. So we're going to be doing a session called VR Amazing. Our presenter today is from Southwest REC2 and Deming, and his name is Daniel Archuleta. He uh, supports Pristine Parton on the ground there for their school districts in that area. Um, Daniel has uh, was born and raised in Deming, New Mexico. Um, he has studied so many different things, robotics, automation, and pneumatics. After graduation, he moved to Phoenix and uh, where he studied culinary arts and he was a chef, um, but he always hand, had his hand in technology. <clears throat> So during the pandemic, what happened was everything shut down, including that industry. So he came back and acquired some IT certification and uh, returned to his hometown and started doing IT support. Um, and he started his own business, but also worked for Deming Public Schools. And that's when he joined uh, Southwest REC. Um, so there, I know Christina is really glad to have him and um, we are too. Uh, we are actually partnering with Southwest REC uh, to this coming next year for Tech Bits. And Christine is going to have, and, and Daniel are going to have their own kind of Tech Bites. It's going to be Tuesday Tech Bites. And so they're going to be bringing all of the information that they know um, and kind of just uh, in a similar package. To, to kind of what we do here already at REC9. So we're gonna have double the content for next year in different areas. So we're really excited about that partnership and collaboration and to be able to bring that information to you guys and resources. So without further ado, Daniel, I'm so excited for today's presentation. It's all yours. Awesome, thank you. Um, hello again, reintroduction of myself, um, Daniel Archuleta. Um, at uh, Southwest Regional Education Cooperative number 10. Um, so what I have here for you is a quick little training of how you can have implementations of virtual reality and augmented reality uh, in the classroom. Um, I have a PowerPoint slide for you. Um, I also have a couple of polls as well uh, that I'm going to be including in the link here in a quick second. So first of all, our, um, our, our poll, I'm gonna be utilizing it through Nearpod. It is an online platform that has uh, created uh, many lesson plans, whether they be your electives or your core curriculum. Um, and they have everything in the side and also some VR, AR um, aspects to it as well. And it's very, um, versatile it could be on a computer a tablet laptop and even a cell phone and it is designed for all of our um grade levels from pre-k all the way to 12th and uh, even a couple of adult lessons for post-secondary so let me get this link here for our poll okay again let me make sure i make get it to everybody <laughs> So I have a poll in our chat. And once we just get started signing in, I'll go ahead and get it started. And we have about 45 seconds uh, if this poll to fill it out. Perfect, I already have two student lists. One, three, perfect. And if you don't have access to it for the live demonstration, I could also provide a secondary link. Um, and this link will be valid for uh, 29 days, just in case you need it. So that option is also out there. Okay, we have four participants. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the activity started. So you're gonna go ahead and see here, questions, answers, and... Um, once the search getting filled out, we can go ahead and get it done. None whatsoever, some experience. Perfect. 
some experience. That's good. That's good. So we have base knowledge of how VR is. Lovely to hear that. Great. Four, three. Ah, time is up. So we got a couple of people here with no experience whatsoever. And that's perfect because this webinar is designed for anyone with all experiences with virtual reality or augmented reality as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with my PowerPoint presentation and go ahead and get this up first before I share my screen. And we'll get here. know where to go. One quick second, I do apologize. I'm having technical difficulties again. <laughs> okay. No worries, Daniel. And here we go. Here is not my screen. There's my screen. Well, perfect. Virtual reality in education. Uh, this is me. Um, here is my contact information, my email, my office line, and where I'm working uh, from Region 10, as April said, um, headquartered in Deming. And in honor of today's holiday, may the 4th be with you. Had to throw in a little Star Wars snippet. <laughs> okay, so. Let's get started. Virtual reality. Um, virtual reality is essentially primarily concerned with simulating vision and an entire environment. Um, a headset is worn. Uh, two lenses are placed in front of the screen inside of the headset. Uh, these lenses are biconvex lenses. They have a range from 45 to 80 degrees and they're curved on both sides. Um, I have a picture of it, I don't have a live example, and they help project the flat screen to simulate the 3D we have in our world. So the lights project down, up and around as they would in uh, real life. Um, so whenever you're in the virtual reality with the headset on, um, you are eliminated from any engagement to reality. Um, obviously your entire vision's done, depth perception's gone, so you can't see there are safety features with it. And usually with virtual reality, um, it's connected to a device that can uh, support the graphics, you know, whether they be very pixelated, very cartoonish to almost um, lifelike, like you're, in their in the real world, real world. Um, so that's a little snippet on how virtual reality is. Um, augmented reality, um, augmented reality technology. It's essentially overlaying pop outs, three D photos, text, and graphics. Um, very highly used in sports. Whenever they're uh, drawing the plays on the screens or graphics and things like that. Um, a very famous one is uh, Pokemon Go. Um, that's a great augmented reality example. And if you don't play that, uh, Amazon Shopping, whenever you have a piece of furniture and you wanna see, hey, does it look cool in my room? Um, and that's what you can use it for. You can move a piece of furniture around, rotate it and still see how it looks um, while it's actually not there. It's augmenting what you already have. Um, so augmented reality versus uh, virtual reality. Virtual, it's 75% virtual as 25% real. For augmented, uh, those percentages are flip-flopped. 75 real, 25% virtual. Um, and it's more aimed towards uh, mobile devices, tablets, phones, um, things that don't require a lot of power to make things um, 3D. So it's just overlaying what is already there. Um, and here's another little example of virtual reality versus augmented. Um, virtual, you're fully immersed. Augmented, it's just uh, overlaying digital information, uh, essentially almost like a heads up display. 
Um, another good example of an augmented reality would be having a little projector on your car dashboard that puts up a little information on the windshield. That technology exists as well for augmented reality as a heads up display. <laughs> so there's multiple current real world um, devices and necessities or luxuries for it. Um, mixed reality, that's a fun one. So mixed reality is a combination of both virtual and augmented. Um, and this is more for the advanced systems. And I'll get into that a little bit more later, but essentially you are able to manipulate real world objects and bring them in to the simulation. So that is um, the mixed reality aspect right there. And it is mostly a step up from AR, but you are still in a simulation in a sense. So that in its own sense is, it's amazing. It's fun. <laughs> um, uh, Daniel, I, have a, I have a question. Yes. So on the mixed reality, mm -hmm. um, I'm just trying to get uh, my, wrap my brain around what you're telling us. So would this be like, um, could, could I somehow, like if I had a big piece of equipment, but yet my students were, were, were not at that location, would this be an, does it does that does that um, piece of equipment have to be right in front of you and then you can interact with it that way or is it something that can be projected or or kind of like put into place in the visual goggles um, <laughs> yeah I understand that question unfortunately you do need the device on you or around you for that um, Whenever it comes to uh, projecting to multiple devices, that's where um, one of our availabilities for a Google Cardboard is going to be. And actually that's right on the next slide. Thank you very much for bringing that up. <laughs> um, so our availability, so you could have one major, I guess you could say um, processing unit, not a centralized, but essentially like uh, a gaming laptop. Um, you could use that only to project one fully immersed digital headset, but you could also project smaller programs to multiple devices like uh, Nearpod, how we did that poll. Um, that's a perfect example of that solution that you just asked because everything is gonna be on a, on a mobile device and a headset. Um, so I hopefully that answered your question. <laughs> Yes, thank you. That helps. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so our availability uh, with VR and AR, uh, predominantly VR at this point, um, Google Cardboard, um, it's very, very, very cost effective. You could literally build um, a, a headset quite out of cardboard um, from scraps that I have essentially found throughout the office and scotch tape. Um, you put a phone in here and I don't have the lenses on it, but you can see here the two little holes where the lenses would go to simulate that 3D experience. Um, Steam VR, that is more on the advanced level. Uh, that requires a high performance uh, computer to be able to process the, um, the complexity of the graphics and the environment that you are going to be immersed in. Um, Oculus, everyone is quite familiar with Oculus, made by a meta formerly known as Facebook. Um, they're the intermediate route between from cardboard to an advanced headset. Um, and then with that, we have three tiers of Oculus. And then PlayStation VR, that's been kind of like a flop that is obviously aimed more for gaming, but there are few health and wellness uh, games that PlayStation VR would be good for, as well as Oculus and Steam. Um, Google Cardboard is very limited, and I'll get into that one here in one quick second with Alter Reality and Education. So Google Cardboard, the entry level of AR and VR for the classroom. Um, like I said, it's extremely cost effective from scraps and um, essentially supplies that are just laying around any school, um, sometimes maybe even at home, who knows? But uh, the apps that we have that here that I'm just gonna be uh, highlighting, um, the Cardboard Design Lab, 
it essentially is the principles for developing uh, virtual reality experiences. So while you're in, you're developing a virtual reality from scratch, you could be inside of the experience or you could be on a computer uh, building it from the back end and then you could use your little cardboard headset and phone to go ahead and um, jump into the simulation that you have created um, for sites in VR. You could have virtual tours from multiple famous landmarks in Turkey, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Syria, um, literally anywhere in the world, as well as Google Earth is kind of a parallel for sites in VR. Um, Apollo 15 VR, that's going to simulate uh, a landing on the moon, as well as a moonwalk and unloading the rovers. Um, our Loon apps, um, they're very limited. They only really have four um, availabilities, but it is core curriculum and you do pay for it. And it's about $3.50 for the app per account. So like, let's say if you utilize a lot of mobile technology like iPads in your classroom, you know, and you have one generalized account, like let's say, um, you know, Mrs. Parton's third grade English class, you know, and you could have an email account for third grade English and you could have all those apps, the same app downloaded on multiple devices as long as it's under that account. And I believe you may have to pay for it once. I might be misspoken, misspeaking, but that option is also available there. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you a quick um, about cardboard in general on my screen. And can anyone, everyone see my screen right now? Perfect. So this is the Google Cardboard landing page. Um, you have options to purchase them as well. They range $9 to all the way up to almost 40 bucks um, per, but you can make your own. And that's if you order it directly from Google. Um, right here on this page, we have um, uh, the Google Cardboard uh, how to make it and you have steps things that you'll need so everything is essentially here <laughs> my favorite part about this one if you have not used instructables i love instructables it's people to show other people how to make stuff i love my favorite part is a cutout here it's nice and clean from um, google cardboard and then the final device is you can see where they cut it out i just find that one kind of funny on a personal note <laughs> um, so right here, we have our Arloon apps. We have the Arloon solar system, chemistry, and anatomy. They had a geometry. Um, it might be in there somewhere down the road. It might be an older version, but um, Arloon is still there. And that's pretty much a quick little um, spiel on how Google Cardboard has its availability. So if we go back to um, the Google Cardboard as well, unfortunately, it is very limited in its processes. If any application um, needs more than one button, it is not meant for Google Cardboard because you're not gonna have, have controllers to be able to navigate through anything. Uh, it's not really meant to be fully interactive as VR is, it's more of a guidance. Um, so essentially you would just have like a little hole in the side or um, a little magnet. So what the magnet would do, and I know everyone magnets and technology is a big no-no, um, it creates a little magnetic field that simulates on your phone um, as you're touching it or like a button click. And it uses the built-in sensors that you have on your phone of the tilting sensors and the um, accelerometer sensors and stuff like that. So it, everything's already built into the phone. And that's uh, Google Cardboard. And there's just so much that Google Cardboard already has. And just to uh, continuously iterate that it's extremely cost-effective. Uh, the apps, this is our giant list of apps that they have. Um, it could be, a lot of education, a lot of fun, a lot of just base, basic interaction uh, for Google Cardboard. And the Play Store is just getting bigger and bigger, especially with um, 
the cardboard design lab um, that is a software development kit. So a lot of people are downloading that and creating their own VR experiences and uploading them to the Play Store as well. So that could be perfect for um, high school level students that all want to develop their own apps. So there's just so, so many applications that would give our kids um, real world experience. Um, here's the materials to even make the Google Cardboard. Um, obviously cardboard, uh, elastic band or a shoestring or something to hold the, um, the headset to your face. Uh, unfortunately, I have glasses, so sometimes the glasses hold it on for me, so that works out. Um, almost everyone has a smartphone now. And also to note, um, parents, if whenever you upgrade your phone and you don't throw it away, um, see if there's a way to do an old device donation. Maybe some schools would need this if they have um, different applications that utilize basic phones, especially if they're older that only need to run one app. It's always good to donate and recycle old technology. Oh, um, here's the ring, uh, the ring magnet. Like it's optional. You can just cut a hole out and touch the screen. Um, here's the example of the lenses. Uh, there's different sizes. Essentially, um, they all do the same thing: is just uh, bend the light around your eye or move the light around your eye to make it seem like you're in a 3D virtual simulation. Um, and the tools, tools, pretty much everyone has them, a box cutter or uh, an X-Acto knife. Everyone has this stuff on their desk sometimes. Um, even a little hot glue gun, ruler, uh, pens, paper, every, everything is already in the classroom in a sense. And you could even turn it into a fun project. Let's see you can make the best, um, uh, best decorated cardboard headset, you know? And you could use it with scissors and not an X-Acto knife, especially if you have littles in the classroom. Um, moving on to Oculus. So Oculus is the mid-range and that mid-range is also tiered off to entry, intermediate and advanced, uh, respectively the photos being shown. Um, on the left, you have the Oculus S, um, very simple. It has a couple of buttons on it. So it's for slightly more complex apps. Um, then you have the middle, then you have the Rift on the right. Uh, the one on the right, the Rift, um, all of these, they have their own um, computers essentially built in where they um, render, which is uh, an IT term of um, pretty much making the graphics appear, uh, processing the graphics. So they all these headsets have built in um, capabilities of processing graphics, but the one on the far right with the cord, that's the Rift. Um, that one specifically, you could use that as an advanced setup as well. So you could plug it into a computer and it could process more advanced um, uh, graphics. So uh, Ecosphere, uh, this one's a fun one. Uh, you could experience the savanna jungle uh, of Kenya, you know, or you could go travel to the ancient jungles of Borneo or even go and swim in the coral reefs of the Raja Ampat in Indonesia. Um, it's great for social studies, uh, the mission ISS quest, um, life on the International Space Station. Um, you could dock a space capsule, you could take a spacewalk, um, and there's also real guides, guides from real astronauts that have lived on it as well. Um, and then we all know the N. Frank house with, in the secret annex where um, uh, the, the eight people were up in the attic for over two years being hidden. And this um, application software, it's more of a guided partial interaction, but it shows you what life was like and how the secret annex looked um, outside of going to the museum itself. So it's kind of like going to the museum without physically being there. Um, Nat Geo Explore VR. Um, this one's another fun one too. Uh, you only kind of have like two guided options, but they're very well um, created. So you could go look for a lost emperor colony, penguin colony in Antarctica, or you could visit uh, Machu Picchu and witness the rediscovery of the Incan Citadel. Um, and there's so many more on the Oculus store. Uh, again, the Oculus store is, 
kind of aimed for intermediate. So it's going to have both games and education. So this is the landing page for MetaQuest. <laughs> um, and that's how they start off. And I probably have misspoken with the names um, after Facebook changed their name to Meta, they're probably gonna change all of this Oculus stuff down the road. But um, you can see here health and wellness, uh, great for PE, because I know a lot of our um, secondary education in high school, the elective teachers, they feel left out because a lot of new technologies don't incorporate what they have. But if you have a hybrid working and or a hybrid environment where you have some students at home under uh, protocols or just you know going to school remotely, um, they could go ahead and jump in and do an hour of health and wellness like they would in a real PE class, just doing it from home. Um, I have two health and wellness uh, apps. Um, one's Beat Saber. And if you haven't seen it, you kind of have like um, a lightsaber in each hand and you go to the tempo of music and you slice in direction of the boxes that are coming at you. And the more uh, you level up, and the more um, experience you get and the more difficulty the songs get, you actually break sweat. Um, I myself have put on a couple of uh, pound wrist weights and did that. And when I got out of even a 30 minute quick little exercise, I was sweating bullets. I, I was soaked, it was hot. Um, Gorn is another fun one too. Um, you're a gladiator uh, trying to survive in a sense, but um, it's room scale, so you could pretty much set up the boundaries of your VR, and the harder you swing, the more damage you're going to do, so that's also going to be um, exercise, cardio, exerting calories, um, and that's just with Oculus, and this is intermediate um, aspects of VR, so you can see how it tears off from a, a basic cardboard set to a slightly more advanced where they make their own graphics or connect to one. And now we're gonna be getting into um, advanced VR. <laughs> and you can see here, the gentleman is on this treadmill. Um, this treadmill here uh, simulates actual walking, running, and on his waist, uh, the crouch as well. But um, these are fully immersed. They require special shoes, a uh, performance computer, um, and these aspects are more for uh, potentially military training, um, even uh, in surgery as well. In some college colleges, they have real full simulations for surgery that are not open to consumers or educators really, but they're more proprietary, but they're out there and you could do something as simple as an apodectomy or open heart surgery. Um, racing simulation and the flying simulation um, during the peak of the shutdowns, especially when it comes with racing uh, simulations, um, a lot of the pro racers, NASCAR, F1, um, they got racing simulations and they maintain that practice and, and they are real. Um, there was an esports champion that won, that got first place and won the championship for F1 racing, just the simulation he was signed for real world driving F1. So there's, once you get more experience and advanced to it, there's a lot of open opportunities to do stuff. Um, even a flying simulation, uh, that's if you wanna get pilot's license, get a few hours in there, some of these that you would have to pay for, but they would count towards a pilot license, helicopters, uh, single engine, puddle jumpers, all the way up to, you know, Boeing's. Um, major military um, applications for it as well, for even combat. So virtual reality could be anywhere from kindergarten level education to full-blown <laughs> combat simulations for the military. Um, so- hey, hey, Daniel. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. You did have one request. Uh, Tamara oh. is, uh, uh, Gabriel, I guess. Can mm -hmm. you type the names of the last one plus Gorn lightsaber, the lightsaber game. If you can put that in the chat, she'd really appreciate it. Perfect, uh, Beat Saber. That one's a really Beat. fun one. If, yeah, <laughs> my pleasure. Um, hence the lightsabers 
May the Fourth. Um, no, Beat Saber is very fun. Um, I I love that one <laughs> a lot. Uh, oh, and you could play um, multiplayer games as well. And I'm going to actually be showing you a couple of uh, screenshots here. Um, so this is Mars VR. Um, you have here your watering plants that you need and a greenhouse to grow food if you were to live on Mars or go colonize Mars. Um, and also <laughs> the screenshot on the right of that little object um, flying in the air, Pristine actually picked up an empty gas can and just chucked it. So I had to get a screenshot of that, but uh, it's, it's very fun once you're inside the, um, the simulations. Uh, job simulator and rec room. Uh, job simulator is literally what it sounds like. There's four jobs, um, auto mechanic, uh, let's see what else, a gourmet chef, an office worker, and also a, um, a convenience store clerk. Um, rec room, and this one's fantastic for, for athletics. Um, you could play dodgeball, baseball, tennis, and uh, rec room, uh, it's an online as well. So there's that social aspect. So if you have friends, you could join, chat with them, voice chat, and play baseball, play whatever sports, um, billiards, table tennis. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty fun, very social. Um, Google Earth VR. This one's also a very fun one, too. Uh, you could literally travel the world. I went and I saw the Statue of Liberty and the Roman Colosseum within three seconds. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not obviously being there, but it, it, the rendering, the graphics quality is just so amazing. It almost feels like it, like you're standing right there almost thousands of years ago in the gladiator fights. <laughs> Um, before we get started on one thing, I do have a quick lesson for us with Nearpod. Um, with Nearpod, it's really fun. So I'm going to provide another link in um, our chat so we can go ahead and do a little quick uh, virtual field trip. Um, I am going to be using my cardboard for this one. So I could show you how it looks on the phone. So on the App Store and the Google Play Store as well, um, Nearpod, it's, it's free to start. They have um, pre-developed lesson plans as well as you could create your own. I just created this one real quick on the fly um, just so I can go ahead and show you show an example of how Nearpod could work and a little live demonstration of how could you use it for the phone for the student, especially if um, they're remote or even in the classroom, it's super fun. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in my name and I'm sure everyone else as well. I have four in here so far. And then I just joined the lesson. So right here, you can see on the screen, it gives me enter VR option. So in the VR option, now I can see how the screen has been split. And that's how you see. So if you see you tilt your head, the whole, everything changes and moves around. So here we are at the Chichen Itza in the Yucatan Peninsula, you know? So that's a nice little one. And on your computer screen as well, you can go ahead and drag it around. Um, this is the midday. You can see the tourists, you can see the uh, other pyramid. And here in the VR, you can see it through the holes as well. I know it's not the best, but it's kind of like a little sample without having it in front of you. Um, and then here we have uh, the Acropolis, or what's left of it, in, in, in Greece, you know, um, beautiful Roman architecture, you know, and then the beautiful view, if you spin it around, of the outer lying city. Um, then we also have a plant cell, little 3D um, CGI of it, so you can see all the parts of the plant cell, how they look. I personally, myself, don't know what any of that is. <laughs> Um, somewhere photosynthesis happens. I think this little green guy here, 
um, sorry, biology teachers, or yeah, I don't know. Um, and then we also have here the, the Parthenon um, as well, another uh, computer generated um, graphic of it. And you can move this one around as well as in the headset, we could VR it. And then finally at the end, we have our little oil refinery where that can be moved around. Um, and, and this is just one platform out of multiple. I've touched base a little bit with Google Cardboard. That's a platform. Uh, Nearpod here, this is another one. Um, as, as well as creating lessons. So Nearpod to sign up, it's very free. You have already a lot of um, availability. Like tomorrow is Cinco de Mayo. You know, they already have a K through second grade lesson plan, a third through fifth, and then sixth through 12th grade lesson plans as well. So even if you wanna just play with it, try some Cinco de Mayo stuff tomorrow, that'd be fantastic as well. You know, but Nearpod, um, just has everything from electives to your core curriculums. Um, and then another one as well is a Z space. And this was actually provided to me from the webinar I did earlier in the morning from one of the attendees. And this one is actually really cool as well. Uh, they have kits, laptops with a pen and they have special glasses. And it pretty much projects into our old school 3D glasses. If we remember the old red and blue lenses, <laughs> um, but the pen would explode an engine and you could see all the parts move them around and it puts it back together again for you. And this is all real world um, items that can be blown up and then uh, investigated through trouble shot and then put back together all, all virtually. And that's just one more um, platform that you have. Uh, ZSpace, not free, unfortunately. Um, it does cost a lot for the system, but per unit, um, they do provide all the materials, uh, an X amount of glasses, a pen, a laptop, and everything else. And even curriculum is provided with it as well. So there's, there's many options out there for um, augmented reality in the classroom, whether it's super advanced, if you have the budget for it, or if you want to do something super fun with your young kiddos, you know, make it out with, with just cardboard and scraps that are just laying around the classroom. Or if you're in high school and you have a 3D printer, you could 3D print literally anything. So have a competition with your students. Um, Here's my resources. Uh, this PowerPoint's gonna be included. It's gonna be saved as long as the video. Um, these are all the resources that I pulled from. A couple of others that didn't make it into the presentation that I felt were not pertinent to know. But um, this is where I got all my resources from. And before I jump into a live demonstration, uh, do we have any questions, concerns, comments, uh, pontifications, if you have any? Uh, the, the chat room uh, hasn't gone off, so you're good there, Daniel. Perfect. Okie dokie. So I'm going to go ahead and stop one share. And if we've all seen Spider-Man, I feel like the guy in the chair right now jumping from computer to computer. I'm gonna go ahead and share on the other screen our live demo. So let me go ahead and find my Zoom. And be forewarned, um, uh, it will seem a little laggy because I'm providing a live VR experience um, stream. And it does take a little bit of resources from the computer. So it might be choppy on your end, but I'll be sure we go nice and slow. Perfect. 
So I take it everyone could hear what's going on. So we have our lovely pristine. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my camera around real quick so you can go ahead and see how it looks like to be in a slightly more advanced um, VR experience. See the headset, the controllers, and uh, and that is my personal kit. <laughs> Looking <confident>. good, pristine. <laughs> Looking good. <laughs> Yep, so what we have here, uh, you could change the language um, if you just saw that as well. So virtual reality as well, especially in our state, we have a lot of ELL students. Um, a lot of these applications go with, farm. yes, the sound works, sorry. Um, a lot of our application, or a lot of the applications go with the system defaults. So they could be in any language what your system is in and also if the application itself supports it so not everything hello human to welcome to an accurate simulation of office worker i love it Take this one is this board for instructions job simulator. so it gives you it provides you with little instructions and it's really fun um i know unfortunately this morning workers would traditionally start their day with an addictive liquid stimulant Wow, this one's a lot smoother than this morning. <laughs> but yes, so how many of us have worked in an office? We currently do donuts, coffee. This is almost like a real world thing, but it's it's more fun. They provide you with tasks. So, so our, our kids can have a sense of accomplishment, a sense of ownership, um, potentially even develop a, a work ethic. I mean, granted, it does look like a video game, but it's giving them- Also, workers would ingest a frosted sugar torus for sustenance. It'll give them the cognitive skills to go ahead and be able to follow directions um, and to have some critical thinking aspects because a lot of these uh, simulations, I don't now want to you're say ready to anymore. start your day. It's a lot time of these for a computer. Time for a computer. A lot of these applications, um, they, the they do have the most important gaming aspects of the office, to them, but with humans and safety, safety so being a close second aspect. and third. And then you can see on the screen, it translates it into a, into a different language right there. It's Spanish. So it's perfect for ELL as well, regardless whether it's Spanish, French, Deutsch. Um, so now we have this beautiful live demo. Um, now that you see it up, any, any questions? While, <laughs> while this is up? That would be nice to have the smell. Um, I actually was speaking with uh, a cybersecurity analyst that I personally know, and we got into a conversation of <laughs> how much data, if you think about it, our, our brains are pretty much computers and they could store exuberous amounts of information and we have very little tap into it. But if you break it down, what does coffee smell like? And and if it were a file size, how how big would that file be? If you think about it on that sense, you know, like a PDF file is like two megabits. How 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 big of a file would would coffee smell? If you think about it that way. <laughs> so that's that's just another thing that you can also think about as well when it comes to these. Oh, perfect. There's a menu, and there's one of my favorite features is the safety. So you can see me in the back waving. Um, so whenever you're in the menu, uh, a lot of these more advanced headsets and um, uh, devices, they have external cameras for the mixed reality experience. So you could look down, pick something up without trying to fumble around as if you had a blindfold um, over your eyes. So that's a great feature. Um, also this feature set up when you get past, uh, if you look in the background, those red grids, um, that's the boundary of um, the VR. You, you set up these boundaries yourself. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera around. And if you can, Pristine, show them uh, what the boundary looks like whenever you're actually in um, the game. Yeah, so you could go ahead and click on the return to game. 
So you can see her walking around the room and if she starts walking out of the preset boundaries, that red grid gets more defined and it's an uh-oh, stop right here. There's gonna be something, you're gonna hit something. So this area, we had completely cleared it out. So you have the base stations, one and two there. So, so with it, um, there's a lot of safety uh, with it before you even set it up. Um, there's a little tutorial for the room setup. So it's like, hey, clear out the area, make sure there's no pets or me at personal experience, make sure there's no nephews or nieces or, or your own littles running around and you just uh, bonk them on the head with the controller. <laughs> uh, so um, these features are there. So, and even whenever you go past the boundary, you can have an automatic pop-up on the camera. But unfortunately that uh, feature is with specific games, uh, not Job Simulator. Um, but, um, but yeah, um, after this now, I'm gonna go ahead and share another um, link for an after poll now um, to see your comfort level with VR. So just real quick, and, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name right, but is it Tamara or Tamara? I don't know. Sorry about that if I'm butchering it, but- it's Tamara. <laughs> Tamara, okay. Um, she has a comment for you in the chat. It's it's not a question, but it's more of a comment, but it's pretty funny, so you gotta check it out. Oh, the ad smells to VRs for authenticity? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's where I, I was uh, talking about how, how big would that file be in a computer because um, that, that buddy that I was talking to, um, that's how we got into that conversation. And this is, the headset that Pristine was using. So this is an HTC Vive. Um, these, this one uh, is second to the newest. Uh, KIC Sierra is in um, the Nearpod lesson. So all these little divots here, they're infrared sensors um, that track your motion. So the base stations are motion capture uh, with infrared and then the controllers as well here they also have similar divots throughout for infrared. So that's that's amazing for motion capture or um, mocap for short. And then, oh, perfect. And then the base stations are just small little box um, that kind of look like cameras that emit the infrared that track it. And all of these connected to the computer um, with the exception of the headset or wireless. Um, Oculus and Google Cardboard are more meant to be mobile, portable. Um, some of the advanced systems like mine, um, not so much because you actually have uh, two, four, five, five elements that you have to take with you, not including the cords and the machine that's going to be um, processing that information for you. So it's, it's really fun um, once you get past um, the initial fear. When I first got the VR, oh, was I, was I stumbling around like a newborn would? I, I tripped a couple of times at my house, um, slipped, caught myself. Um, when I first was setting it up here in the office to do prep work for the training, I almost tripped on a chair. <laughs> so um, it's all just really, it's really fun, regardless whether it's for education or for personal use, but, but the as aspects for it, the limitations are, are endless. Um, you could create from scratch, you could utilize what's already there. Um, and with the example of Nearpod and ZSpace, you have a lot of educational purposes and utilization for it. And if you don't have the big budgets to get Oculus for 10 students or five students, or, or if you do have the budget to even get an advanced system, um, by all means, I would recommend it because any of these pilot programs for technology, we're only moving further and further and further 
and with the hybrid learning, um, the lost education time, this is a really good way to get our kids more involved, more interested in learning if we make it more fun for them. Um, also with the online applications for it, like recreational room, rec room, um, there's a social aspect behind it. Um, there's another one that's very social. It's called Gorilla Tag, not educational at all. You are literally a monkey playing tag with other players online. Um, I mean, you could turn that one into a wellness activity, but I mean, there's just so many options, so much availability from very cost-effective, almost free to a good chunk of change. And it really depends on what's in the budget, your comfort level with it and um, everything else. And with that, I'm going to end with our final round of Q&A. If anyone has anything for me, feel free to speak out or forever hold your peace. <laughs> uh, so that was really, so- Not a lot of people signed up. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so what we did here, uh, we, we were, we had the opportunity to write a grant for uh, some of our school districts and our member districts in our area. So that really helped. And one of the teachers actually requested the Oculus. So in Cloudcroft, they're able, they're use, utilizing it in the classroom with that. But again, you know, she only asked for one. So, you know, and, and they're running like what? I mean, I think I think it was like three hundred bucks or four hundred bucks or whatever. So yeah, there's there's definitely, but but I like what you said about. I think it's about providing opportunity, mm -hmm. and you've shown us a gamut of you know how to do it on your own at home with simple uh, resources that are right on site, uh, and and students can still get an experience and exposed to different technology. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's great, Daniel, thank you. Oh no, thank, thank you for, um, for reaching out and collaborating with us and this opportunity to be able to provide any information, how to use more advanced technology in the classroom. <laughs> um, you do have a question? How clean cleanable are the VRs? Pink eye, COVID. Oh, thank, okay, this is a teacher. I was kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Had to wipe many um, things down. <laughs> that is a great question. So essentially right out of the box, um, for the Oculus, they do have uh, cleanable um, headsets. And as well as an example here, um, a lot of the, the, the padding and the cushions are removable, um, relatively cheap as well. And I had to go ahead and get like the, like the little fake leather with like the holes and stuff, excuse the um, stuff on there, but this is a PLU. So you could sanitize it um, with like Lysol wipes and stuff like that, and as well as anything else. I myself had, um, um, have to keep a lot of uh, services that touch um, my face clean for for some some couple of reasons, you know. So it's just one of those things where it's easily sanitizable. Um, you can replace the the cushions from foam to PLU. They are relatively cheap. I mean, you could probably even buy a package from Amazon, like a three pack for like fifteen dollars. We have to make sure you get the model right. Um, and, and the plastic itself, it could just be sanitized with like a Lysol wipey. Um, but the cleaning applications behind it, very simple. Yes? So, so, um, so Tamara, thank you for all your questions. She has a, a, kind of two parts. So she says on that piece, so basically, so each student might have to purchase their own consumable parts for the unit. Uh, could be one way to work it or you purchase uh, multiples for your classroom, just depending on what your budget allows. Would that work, Daniel, you think? And Not then, pretty much, yeah. Okay. And then says, uh, she also had another question earlier, or uh, yes, which app uh, post student safety risk to general public? 
Question? Uh, I want to see that question. Um, can you repeat that question again to me, please? So it says, which apps pose student safety risks to general public? Well, the, Tamara, you may have to elaborate on that a little bit. I think I get it. Um, uh, the social aspect of it, of how we have to be very careful of of where they go, you know. So it's going to be like anything on the internet. Um, a lot of them they have to be 13 and up with parents' permission if they're under 18. Um, as well as a lot of the online aspects, there are parental controls, so you can control the maturity rating of the apps that are launched as well. So there's a lot of parental control. Um, mindsets built into it, especially with um, the Oculus from from Meta, because we have already seen um, their their issues that they had to deal with last year that almost essentially forced them to change their name from Facebook to Meta because of that concern of online access for kids and and um, and just the bad people that are out there. But um, parental controls, always number one, check if they're there. Uh, make sure you set limits of the maturity rating for the apps that are downloadable. Um, make sure you put a password to download every single app beforehand, just standard um, precautions really. And then whenever they're in, and if they're under 13 or 18, um, always recommended to be under adult supervision. There's always those little asterisks there, but I mean, it's, it's per, it's essentially per household, per user, and how they have their own comfort level with it. I hope that answered your question, Tamara. Perfect. If nobody else has any more questions. <laughs> Daniel, thank you so, so much. I'm gonna go ahead and stop our recording for today, but we really appreciate you doing, putting this all together for us. Thank you, REC 10. And I said two earlier and it's a 10 and I apologize about that. My bad. <laughs> it's fine, so it wanna, starts I wanna, Now it's, re it's on recording, but I've, I've got straight. <laughs> anyway, all right. Hold on one second. <laughs>